Well, if you're about Hanukkah partied out, hey, let's go to the source of Hanukkah, and that is Modi'in Israel, the home of the Maccabees. Well, at least it used to be. Now it's home to Hanuk Young. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Hanukkah Sameach. Happy Hanukkah. It's, um, you know, it, it, it's funny. I, I've been trying to follow the incredibly rapid switch of you going from one Hanukkah party to the other. <laughs> I, I, I mean, we're, we're going to start, you know, nicknaming you Hanukkah Harry or something. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's amazing, Mike. You know, I'm, I'm not a real party person. I, I never really was. But uh, we've gone to, I, I think that, well, Kathy and I have done two so far. I was over at uh, Gates to Zion, of course, and, you know, involved in the, all that was going on there. And uh, we've got a, we had one last night. We've got one tonight. And then to wrap up the whole thing, you know, my wife decides that we need to do a Hanukkah party here. And you know Kathy pretty well. I mean, you know, it's, sure. it's not just going to be, you know, toss a couple of cookies on yeah. the on on the table. So, yeah, um, yeah. I've got a, a bit of a, a, a let's let's just call it a a Maccabee to do list. Now it sounds great. You know, yeah. I I you know I can't compare to that at all. I can't even hold a candle, if you'll pardon the expression, little uh -huh. pun, little Hanukkah pun. Um, a little light on the subject. Little Now, I have no problem with fried foods. Oh yeah. Pure Israeli olive oil from Tura, I'm all set. Mm. My problem is the sufganiyot, the donuts. That's way too many carbs. <laughs> and to split one sufganiya, one donut over eight days to have it remain fresh would be yet another Hanukkah miracle. <laughs> Ain't going to happen. <laughs> so you went ahead and ate, ate the donut on the first day is what you're telling me. Well, you know, as they keep whispering that the gyms will reopen at the same time that our Ministry of Health is saying that we're well over 2,000 new cases a day again, and we may be going into a third lockdown. I didn't know you could go into a third lockdown before you've come out of the second one. In the meantime, of course, Israelis are coming back from Dubai positive for COVID-19. But we won't, put, we won't put United Arab Emirates on the red list of countries because they're now our best friends. Oops. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've, I've kind of seen that. You know, there, there's this thing about strange bedfellows um, that, that kind of rings there that, that maybe, eh, I don't know. I, I'm just okay. not quite trusting this whole thing. But, you know, I mean, you guys have so much going on over there with, with you know, election uh, problems and, and uh, COVID lockdowns or quarantines, which, you know, I, I think that in most countries, I don't know, the, other, the mayor of, or the governor of North Carolina the other day said that we can't go out from 10 o'clock at night until 5 o'clock in the morning. He called it a quarantine. You know, I, I seem to think that the dictionary calls that martial law. Um, but, I'm, you know, maybe I'm the crazy one. So, you know, we wouldn't know anything about what you guys are going through with, with lockdowns and elections, and, and you wouldn't know anything about what we're going through with lockdowns and elections, would you? No, you know, and it, it's, it's, it's funny because we're 99% certain that there will be elections, but it's not a total done deal. Hmm. It's so certain that they've picked out a date already. It's either going to be March the 16th or March the 23rd. Assuming it happens, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, that will be our fourth election in two years. I think we should do the same. I, I'd, I'd like to see us do another election here. I mean, you know, I think maybe we could get a different outcome, but you know, just saying. Okay. How, let's depend. talk. Yeah. Let, let's talk about something relevant. All right. Yes. Like, uh, you know, something that happened a few thousand years ago. The uh, story of Yosef is Absolutely. to me the most fascinating account in the Torah 
Uh, it takes about 20, almost 25% of the book of Bereshit, um, Genesis, as you would pronounce it. Um, and it takes, there, there's this a quarter of the book of Genesis that is devoted to his life. And the prophetic meaning here is just over the top amazing. So what do Agreed. you see in, in the life of Yosef? Okay. I have actually received criticism from people that I speak about Yosef too much. Wait, 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 that, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're, you're saying that you, Hanok Young, have received criticism of something? Not only have I received criticism, but it was based on me saying something too many times, which is so, <laughs> it's so hard to even imagine. It is, it is. I'm, I'm having a hard time with it, so go ahead. But the Yosef story, of course, is the quintessential reunion of Judah and Ephraim. But I actually was thinking about it from a slightly different perspective just this morning. So this is hot off the press. Uh oh. You know, there are people who have hot flashes. This is kind of a lukewarm flash, but here it goes. Yosef is the perfect example. We, we often use the, the in, in discussions between us, we often speak about a sifting out, mm -hmm. a sorting out. And recently I've been obsessed in Sukkot with using the term preparation, preparing for. Yosef was not ready for his role. He was an obnoxious brother. He lorded over them that he was daddy's favorite. This is even worse than Tommy and Dickie Smothers. You know, daddy likes me best. <laughs> he, I, now I'm not saying he deserved to be thrown in a pit and sold to the Ishmaelites, how, well, which was better than the, the other option that the brothers had of killing him. Yeah, true. But he used his time in prison to prepare himself. Many of us in this era, you know, it, we're, we're kind of living in the era of, you know, D.C. And I don't mean Washington. I mean D.C. during COVID or during Corona, as whatever you'd prefer. Okay, so we had that, B.C. before COVID, D.C. during COVID, and exactly. whatever, yeah. And then we'll have ACDC and we'll just go into different music. But that's, but that's, you know, our younger listeners will have no idea what I'm talking about whatsoever, which is okay. Do you, do you, ever, do you ever just scare yourself with your own thoughts? More than I would like <laughs> to admit, honestly. More than I'd like to admit. But here's, here's the example. Yosef was not ready to accept his brothers. If he had not been thrown in prison and, you know, when he had, you know, that opportunity to hang out with Mrs. Potiphar there, it, it, it you know, by the time the brothers came, Yosef was ready to embrace them unconditionally. Mm -hmm. As I like to say, and I've gotten a lot of criticism from these remarks, he never stopped and say, hey, wait a minute, are y'all believers? Like, you know, where, where, you know where, where, do you, where do you stand? And then pulled out his list of five, you know, non-negotiables. Yeah. Rather, he embraced them. Now, I would love to tell you that people like myself, who were busy thinking about preparing, are also willing to forgive and forget. Now, I'm really, I'm personally, I'm more of the mode of Pinchas, Phineas, of, hey, Mike, loan me your spear for a moment. I need to borrow it. But that's okay. I, no, you okay. never even ask. You, you, come on, you'd, I would just take it. you'd just grab it. Yeah, I, know. I would just take it. Yeah. But, but, but here's Yosef as our model. Now, we, I, we, we both, you and I, 
and many others have pointed out many times that Yosef's brothers didn't recognize who he was mm -hmm. because of the way he looked. My contention now is they also didn't recognize him almost after the fact because of the way he acted towards them. They expected and well-deserved retribution. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of like one of those scenes from Kill Bill, Yosef pulls out a samurai sword and goes to work on his brothers. They yeah. fell on each other and he embraced them. And he said, I've been working and I've got a setup for all y'all. I didn't know, I didn't know if you knew that it, it that actually is the literal translation. Yes, yes, sir. from the Hebrew. Yes. Um, and he was able to help the extended family survive the famine in Eretz Canaan, the land of Canaan, Eretz Israel. Interesting. So back to your original statement here that Yosef wasn't, he was, okay, it goes to the, the verse that uh, is, is kind of a, a common with you, with the two of us in, in Bereshit 37, 16. I'm looking for my brothers. Yeah. You know, he wasn't really accepting of them, nor were they really accepting of him. No. You know, the no. dysfunction of the family was at its peak during that time. We have the whole thing with Judah and Tamar, you know, with, with Reuben. Yeah, th this thing is, is just spinning out of control totally. But yet, th these words just resound. I'm looking for my brothers. It's, it's not just a, I'm looking physically for my brothers, but I'm looking for the, the family attachment. Perfect. Perfect, ex Go perfect example. Um, what I wish the text would have said, at least in parentheses, is I'm looking for my brothers, quote unquote, but on my own terms. Mm, mm. Yosef mm. was looking for them to be subservient to him. They were looking for Yosef, but not in the way that he thought. That's pretty much the situation we have today with sadly few exceptions of our attempts at the restoration of all of Israel, mm -hmm. that we still see our brothers and sisters and want to embrace them, but on our terms. And this is where, in my opinion, it ties in with Hanukkah. Okay. This is the latest. I am sick and tired of hearing that people in the Hebrew Roots Movement are unwilling to acknowledge commemorate and celebrate Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. It all comes down to terrific, tremendous, that's the combination of tremendous and terrific, terrific, <laughs> tremendous hatred and resentment of Judaism and the insistence on corrupting the text in the Gospels that indicate that Yeshua as a good Jew, was at the Beit HaMikdash, the temple, for the Feast of Dedication, which is Hanukkah. It's not similar to Hanukkah. It is Hanukkah rendered from the Greek into the English. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it, it says the Feast of Dedication, and it was winter. Okay, you could, right. you could kind of take that to another feast of, you know, the Sukkot maybe or something, except for it was winter. Exactly. There's just no way to get around this. And I've heard people say, well, he went there, but he wasn't celebrating it. If, if I, someone told me once, yes, but he went, I'm certain to reprimand, quote unquote, the Pharisees. So yeah. I said to him, you claim to be a believer in Yeshua. To you, the gospels are scripture. Why are you ignoring what the text says and making it up in your own head. Don't you think that 
the gospel messages, if Yeshua had disagreed with it, wouldn't have said it? Come on, do you, and, then, and, I, and, and as I'd like to say, just to irritate people, do you really want me, the Jewish guy in the room, to point out to you what the Gospels actually say? Well, Bless here, here's the thing, Hanok, that what, what I, you know, kind of, well, let's talk about, you know, our side of the, my side of the family, your side of the family. What my side of the family despises about that day is the same thing that your side of the family despises about that day. And that was a political, corrupt, religious leaders that were hijacking yep. the true scripture of that day and this day. You know, you mentioned just a few minutes ago that when people say, you know, the Pharisees, and, and it's kind of like I said at Gates this past weekend, People don't just say the Jews is the Jews, or you know, you've got to kind of drawn out a little bit because we're teaching you Southern, but it's the same thing with the the Pharisees. There's this this animosity in their voice, which the truth is that there was about seven different sects of exactly. Jew, of, of Pharisaical in, in that day. You know, lumping yes. all of these people in is like you know. Uh, well, you know, the, as you said before we got on the air, the Republicans, okay, the Republicans, are, are you talking about uh, Donald Trump? Are you talking about Lindsey Graham? Are you talking about uh, Mitt Romney? Okay, the, they all have a tag on them, you know, they all have the red sticker, uh, you know, over their forehead or whatever, or, or tattooed into their hand. We're not quite sure, but uh, <laughs> you know, any time, Hanok, that we lump people into a whole group is to take out the individual. And now we get back to Yosef. The only way to defeat that is what's called, uh, you know, we're, we're told in the Talmud, it states very clearly, that the Beit HaMikdash, the temple was destroyed because of Sinat Chinam, groundless hatred yeah. amongst the Jewish people. Rav Kook, in his tremendous wisdom, said the only way to counteract that is Ahavat Chinam, boundless love. Mm. Yosef falling upon his brothers. It wasn't, you know, he didn't even say, you know, I should punish you guys. I should make you suffer. I should take away the years of your life that happened to me as I sat in prison and suffered. Instead, he had matured, a subject that I personally happen to know precious little about. But I have heard that it's a good thing I'm sorry if you're enjoying this conversation too much, Mike. We, we need to get serious. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Um, yeah, you, you, yeah. I, I, won't even, I won't even go there. I know. Well, one, one other point is, you know, when Yosef, an intriguing point of, of Yosef's life is in this week's Torah portion, when it says that he had this big dinner and he, he, you know, this spread that was put out, uh, but he ate by himself. You know, he had never entered into covenant with the Egyptians, though he looked like an Egyptian, talked like an Egyptian, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, but yet, I think he was still, at that point in time, he was still looking for his brothers. Because he didn't know what had happened with them. He knew what had happened with himself. But he wasn't at the moment quite sure of what had happened with them. And so we see this final test of the goblet being placed into the pack of Binyamin. And, you know, Binyamin is the, the smallest tribe. I think he, he's, he's speaking about a remnant. It's going to be a remnant. For, for these that are, 
that are seeing this great end time revival coming because of whatever, uh, you know, that just doesn't go along with what the scripture lays out. Uh, it, you know, it does. Great, it's a great sermon for the latest building program for your church or synagogue, but it, it doesn't go through scripture real well. Uh, no, it doesn't. It tells us there will be a, 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 a remnant like Benjamin who are walking uh, this, this different walk than anyone else and are willing or able because of that to be a uniting force for the family. Exactly. Exactly. A connector. Yeah. A connector. Yeah. You and, know, and then and at the end, you know, our, one of our favorite scriptures of Jeremiah is, you know, I'll, I'll bring you back and I'll correct you as, as I see fit. You know, Benjamin to me is one that he's like, he's in that place of connecting and now let's get the, you know, let's quote unquote, allow the father really, I mean, those are some of the silliest words uh, that have ever been spoken. You know, I'm going to let God really <laughs> now arrogant that. So we're, we're going to, you know, the only thing we're allowing or letting is within us, the work. Exactly. Exactly. No, it, it, it really, and it's, it's, it's for us to change our hearts and our minds. There are too many people over the last nine months of this COVID-19 situation worldwide that are just sitting and waiting till, you know, till, you know, the second half or waiting to the fourth quarter, waiting to see how this plays out before they commit. Yeah. themselves to anything and they're wasting their time and they're wasting the opportunity to prepare themselves to again Hanukkah to rededicate themselves towards both the Beit HaMikdash and the restoration of all of Israel Judah and Ephraim without conditions well you know Mattathias could have said you know it's just not the right time I'll go ahead or, and, you know, or he could have said, he could have said, you know what? I'll be a rich man. I'll just okay. have this one little taste of pig. Yeah. At home, I still won't eat it. And after all, God knows my heart. What would he have been known for? You know, he was a man of conviction. Yeah. Conviction will, will make you a place in history. Riches normally don't. That's very true. Yeah, that's well, very hey, true. I got a surprise for you before we uh, before we go. I got somebody came up to see you. Come here. Oh, it's your favorite puppy. Come on, say hi, Hanok. I yeah, don't think she's real impressed, but uh, yeah, yeah. I, I I I I tend to have that reaction on many it's people. Your buddy. It's your buddy. You know the hey. one that you keep looking for and barking at? Hey. Oh, well. Okay. Get down. <laughs> All right. Throw something else into the mix today. Hello, okay, have a okay. blessed uh, rest of your Hanukkah, uh, whatever you you're do. doing over there. I'm going to see if I can get through to Shabbat, where I can go into a little bit of uh, uh, party recovery. <laughs> you know, lots of latkes. I got to tell you, so many latkes, so little time. What's, what's, what's a country boy going to do? <laughs> All right. Hey, take Enjoy care. Enjoy. Regards. Shalom. Bye-bye.